Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me. My name is Holly Vega, and I am um, coming live from Military Home Base. We are a for-profit company that um, does many things, but that's not why we're here today. So you can go on our website, check out our website, because we do a lot of stuff. But one of the things that we do um, is we try to get back in our community philanthropic in some way, um, because we're a new company, six six months, and we've done a lot of things in that six month span of um, being able to get back. But one of the main things right now is giving a voice to our coasties, um, because as you know, forty one thousand um, coasties are not being paid. Um, uh, roughly around eight hundred thousand federal employees in general are not getting paid. Today we are uh, countdown. Our series is countdown to payday. Day ten. And we're going live with Nicole, and she's going to give us some facts, talk about what's going on in her community, um, how amazing she is, because she has done some amazing stuff where she's rocking on the West Coast, and we're all over here this morning, East Coast. She even got up live three hours early with me to have some coffee. Woohoo! Coffee. And I picked a dragonfly. I want to give a little fact about a dragonfly if no one knows. They are the Japanese symbol of summer and autumn and admired and respected all over. So much of the samurais use it as a symbol of power, agility, and best of all, victory. And they got that in capitalized victory. You can look it up. And so I thought that that would be perfect today. My neighbor, i got to give a shout out, let me borrow it because I'm running out of coffee cups here. Please let this shut down. Stop. So not in so much. I love having coffee with you this morning. I love it. But I'm running out of coffee cups. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to hand it over to you so you can go ahead and tell us some great things about the Coasties. Educate me and also educate us about what's going on in your area and how we can help. So um, let's just start with facts. So today is the second paycheck that our Coast Guard civilians have missed. So now they are a full month without pay. Uh, the last paycheck that came for our active duty families was December 31st, so the 15th paycheck was missed, and we're we're hitting critical days for whether that paycheck's going to come next week, and it's not it's not looking so promising at this point. So, you know, it's it's a scary situation that a lot of families are finding themselves in. You're having to make decisions on what bills do you pay, you know, and it's you try to maintain, especially in our house, we try to maintain a normal life for our children. We don't want them to be affected by this. But when you have field trips coming up and all of that, you have to think in the back of your mind, am I going to be able to financially afford this or is that going to put more financial pressure on us because we need to be paying these bills? We need to make sure that you know, that stuff's taken care of. So one thing that we did at the East Bay Coast Guard Spouses Club is we started a food bank. And so our goal with the food bank was that we could take one less worry off of our family's shoulders in this area. If they can, you know, not have to worry about going and buying groceries, especially in the Bay Area, grocery trips, like probably $200 each time. So if we can take that pressure off of them and allow them to put more money towards paying bills, then that was, you know, our job as a club. So it kind of, it started off and we were like, okay, we'll be able to feed like 50 families. You know, we, we sit, we talk to, to local businesses and we talk to local Alameda, you know, residents. And the day that we opened for donations, the, they didn't stop. They just kept coming in. So it got to the point where we, we became too big for the space that we were in. So we reached out to our chief petty officer association here and said, hey, we need, you know, we need you guys to help us out. This is huge. Um, so they amazingly jumped on board with us and have kind of like started to spearhead it. Um, so statistics about that. So our first one that we did, their very first day, we had 186 people sign in that day, 186. So when we counted household size that day, that was over like 650 people that we touched just in that day alone now going throughout so this is we just did our fourth one last night so adding all of the days up together we've had over a thousand people sign in that's over like two twenty eight hundred families that we've touched and affected that's amazing it's, that's it's, amazing. the numbers the numbers are the numbers are what makes it real. The numbers are what makes mm -hmm. you realize that people truly need this and people truly need the help. And, you know, yes, me and you have had conversations before. I was enlisted in the Navy, so I know what it's like getting that E2, E3 paycheck. 
they're not a lot. And especially when, you know, in the Bay Area, your rent's $3,000, you're not getting that money in to be able to pay your rent. So you're having to figure out, you know, how do you make such a large payment when it's not coming in? So I think that's, you know, that replenishes your savings. Exactly. You know, people who are like West Coast or we're here in Tampa and the, the rent is well yeah. in the two thousands and more for, for rent. You know, so, for people who are, you know, very blessed to have savings, but that doesn't mean life doesn't happen. People could have had savings, you know, and we, we have a friend who they just went through IVF, which isn't covered. And, you know, they spend, I think they're upwards of $10,000 right now this past year in IVF because they wanted to have a baby, baby. you know, and that, that was an important life decision for them. And I, you know, at no point do I feel anybody should be judged off of what savings they did or didn't have for this situation as a military family, you never expected to go unpaid. And I think we're in uncharted waters right now where people are having to kind of fly by the seat of your pants and say, this has never been done before, but let's try it out. Right. And I think it's um, what is inspiring so much is that, you know, everybody keeps on saying like, well, these are smiling. You're right. You're smiling. You're smiling because you still have to live every day. You've got to smile for your children. Absolutely. You're positive that it's going to be okay. Exactly. Um, and for the fact that um, y'all have, pulled together, even though y'all are not all in the same community, all over the United States right now, coasty spouses, because I have to give kudos to them. The spouses are doing this. This is what is so inspiring that y'all have pulled together and um, are being the light as our Stacy Benson has asked everyone to be, to be the light. I love that she started that, you know, that saying, because it's, you know, is, yeah, hashtag it's it. True. And I think that's been, you know, our mentality when we're having these food banks is we're out there, we're handing out cups of coffee, we're talking to people. The one thing I will say about PAC area is that the commands here have been absolutely supportive. Out every single food bank we've had, we've not only had a command representative from PAC area, D11, and the base, but we've had chaplains there. We've had chaplains there that are ready to talk to people that are feeling a financial crisis. And not only that, we have the chiefs there and the senior chiefs there and the master chiefs there who are, you know, they're the leaders of these enlisted people and they're there for ears open. There's no judgment cast. There's none of that. They want to know if you're having an issue and they want to know how they can help. So I think, you know, having not only that, but having the spouses club there who we're trying to smile. We're trying to make sure people know that we're there for them and that, you know, we're feeling the same way that they are, but that we're just pushing through. Like, you know, like Stacy said, all that we can do at this time in this, in this moment is be the light for people. Right. And, and then Stacy Bidlow said, have a cup of coffee. Yes. <laughs> Look, Stacy, I said it right. You <laughs> sit there and go, Oh, Holly, you're butchering my last name this morning. I actually got it right. <laughs> so um, it's everywhere starting. What would you recommend for the sp uh, spouses that are wanting to do this in area and they're having some trouble? Because I know that you are the president, correct? Vice president. You're like, vice, vice president. Get it yep. Vice president. Um, yeah, we want to give kudos to your president. That's for sure. Yeah, so, and Anya's, Anya's been absolutely amazing. But at the same time, Anya's also a YMCA center director. So her life is crazy as it is. Mm -hmm. I'm off, so I'm getting my master's right now. And this is like my month break in between semesters. So I was like, I'm good. I am, I'm going to hope. Let's do this. So, Let's do it. Uh, but even, you know, even people who aren't board members have, stepped up and said, I'm free Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and have committed their days. You know, I think that's a, the bigger picture that when this is all said and done that we can look at is that for a lot of us, this is becoming a full-time job that we're taking on. You know, we're spending, and not even during the week, on weekends, we're, you know, we're spending time and it's, you know, not even holding the food banks, but collecting the items, organizing the items, you know, making sure you're staying in contact with, you know, the businesses that are helping you out. It's, it is a lot of, you know, work that goes behind the scenes. It's tired. The payoff, you're very tired. Yes. Yeah. The payoff is worth it. And that's like the one thing I want to stress too, is I know a lot of weight's been put onto spouse's shoulders 
your mental health needs to remain number one. If you are feeling overwhelmed, if you're feeling tired, if you need to take a step back, you know, and I'll be the first to admit, I got to that point this week. And so I texted, you know, Chief Pally, who's the president of the CPOA. And I have been there every day that this has been going on. I have not missed a day yet. And I missed yesterday. And I said, I need, I just need a day to myself. I need a day with my kids. We ended up Clark's up in Petaluma, so about an hour and a half north. Uh, we took the night and we drove up and just spent the night with him because it was just to that point where if I didn't take the time for myself and to like refocus myself, regain my strength, I wouldn't have had the right mindset moving forward. Right. I know here in Tampa, Kim had mentioned, um, and she's doing great things along with other spouses. Um, Iris Green is going to actually talk to another Coastie from Tampa um, tomorrow, Saturday, because I'll be on the ball field. So she's going to man tomorrow's uh, talking with uh, uh, voice voices for our coasties, right? Voices for the coasties um, that they're open from eight in the morning to like 10. Yep. This is not no eight to five. I mean, these are long hours. Mm -hmm. And from what I gather too, I mean, like the chief petty officers um, associations or the enlisted club and all that, they're doing their job and they're oh, still helping to support y'all in the mission of having the pantries. Absolutely. So how can... Are, are y'all able to get volunteers? So if someone wanted to say, well, you know what? I don't have any extra money to give you. Mm -hmm. And right now my groceries are, you know, trying to feed my family. But you know what? I have time. I have time on my hand. I want to work with my hands. I want to get in there. Can they help you? Yes, they can. So um, I, yeah, I'll be more than willing to share the link, at least for our big area. We have a set schedule now of what our food bank hours are. And I think a lot of places are starting to switch that I've seen, you know, I believe Nevada is kind of switching to it, Petaluma switching to it, where we have these set hours, because we're not looking at that this was going to be a, a few day thing. We're looking into two weeks now, we're looking into missing that next paycheck. And, you know, it's critical when you miss one paycheck, now you're missing two. Now that's money oh, that's free because we're coming up exactly okay. so that's um we do have set hours so with the chiefs um it is in their domain it's in their chief hut so the one thing that they are you know doing is that one chief will be there at any time which i absolutely agree with but as for volunteers we will take all the volunteers that we can get so and i think you know that's the especially with organizing and we had one we had a lot of turkey uh frozen turkeys on our one that we just did on wednesday and we had this wonderful lady from our community who wanted to volunteer and she put herself by the turkeys and she handed one to every single person walking through not one person left without a turkey because she was able to talk with people and you know this is someone in this community who, you know, is able to now go back out into the community and say, I helped at their food bank. And this is the ways that they're struggling. She talked to people, she listened to people, and she's helping get the message out there that this is really affecting a lot of people. Right. But you're doing such a great thing to help so many people. And what y'all have started, um, you know, for the people that say, well, they should know better. Well, now you do. Yeah, um, you're setting, um, you know, because it happened to us. I mean, I'm a Marine Corps spouse, so it can happen to any, you know, our because you're our homeland security to our Department of actually defense. It can happen yeah. on both sides at any yeah. time. And you have sets um, a presence. You set the bars high of well, what you know, do. Like, you know, when you don't want to do this, you yeah. have done it. Yeah. Well, and I've talked to people like Megan and Stacy and all of them. And I think because it's never been done before, when the dust has settled, when this is all over, I think you're gonna see policy written on, this is the way that food banks were properly set up and these are the steps to follow if it's to happen again. Well, I think that, that's a wonderful thing that y'all have, y'all are doing. It's, absolutely. It's really and I think seeing like the bonding of the spouses clubs also, you know, you've had spouses clubs reaching out to each other saying, we wanna start, how do we start? Or we're having issues doing X, Y, and Z. And you're able to bounce ideas off of each other. You're able to bounce, you know, methods that worked for you off of each other. And I think, you know, as a community, it's bringing us together because we're able to, even though we're far apart, even though there's spouses clubs in Tampa that are working on one or spouses clubs in Texas mm -hmm. that are working on one, you're able to still be close because you have the same mission. This, yeah. And ultimately the same goal is to provide, you know, food exactly a necessity you know, of life. Not even, you know and i think people see it as a food bank but ours ours is ours goes beyond food it's diapers it's you know medicine 
it, medicine. She and, and two, you had mentioned that the lady was talking to um the families. She you know she yeah. was actually connecting. Exactly. Uh, big big part of this is that um people feel um and I know this because the other spouse have talked about it with me that they feel embarrassed and there's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's, it's out of your control. Exactly. I mean, you, you, you plan you for so long. This is over the time. And, um, and they're also feeling um, loved and embraced at a moment yeah. where you feel very down and there's other issues going on. There's people having surgery there. I mean, life goes on. So there's other things going on. Like you said, to take this off the plate is one less worry. And I love y'all all for it. I think is, you know, hopefully, and I know, I know many of your company, uh, your community is embracing you too, but from here you're getting such virtual loves. Oh, good. And that, you know, that, that makes it, you know, worth it. And when we, when we started this, you never do it for the credit. You know, I've been a kind of a behind the scenes person. And it, yeah. it, you do it because it's what needs to be done. It's right. you. We knew that this was going to become an issue. We knew that we were going to have families that needed food. And as a club, we said, what can we do to help? Right. And this was our solution. And, you know, like I said, you know, we, we make, we make it a point to touch base with everybody that comes to the food bank. We had, you know, someone that was designated to, we, you know, we got coffee donations from a local coffee place. We had someone who was literally handing cups of coffee out in wine and talking to everybody and if they needed a hug was giving them a hug and you know and we're i think the people one reason why we've gone to an every and every day thing is because when we were running it you know this every few days lines were an hour long you had people waiting an hour to get groceries active duty coast guard members waiting an hour to get groceries that you know that's just things that you never you never imagine and you know, I think one of the hard things that you're going to see coming out of this is you're going to see people maybe choosing not to re-enlist or truly having to make these tough decisions. And I think our goal as a club is to let them know, regardless of the issues that we're facing, we're here to support you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day. And yeah. that's what we're here for, too. I, me and my, my company I work for is giving you all that voice to be able to share this. And for the people that don't know what's going on now, they're more aware that this exactly. really is happening. Well, and, you know, one thing I think that's going to become a big reality for people that they're not, you know, a lot of people, you know, aren't aren't really paying attention to the facts. Retirees pay is going to be missed next week. That's an even bigger issue. Because as much as we are active on social media as active duty and the younger people, you're talking about retirees who may not even know that their paycheck's about to be missed. I know. So that's, you know, we're, we're really kind of gearing up and prepping for that next week because the food bank will open up to retirees next week because we need to know. be in our area at least. Yes. Once, once the first hits and their paychecks are missed, which is what it's, you know, has been passed along is that that's probably the outcome. Um, they will be more than welcome to partake in this food bank. Okay, that's good. Thank yes. you for sharing that. Please send me all the links, everything. Yeah. I will post it up and help um, push this out. Yeah. Keep being the light. Thank you. Drinking coffee in the line or with your girlfriends. Yes, and absolutely. We at Military Home Base love y'all very much and appreciate that you allow um, me and um, Iris every day that for the past 10 days to talk to you and share your stories you. and how we, people can help to donate and, and you know give. do y'all have a I know that some of the spouses clubs or the um, petty officer associations have a link to be able to give gift cards and stuff um, so I, can give you, I can give you the CPOA's PayPal link and okay. then I can also give you um, Chief Powie's email address okay is they have been amazing. The one thing that they did this week that was mind blowing and incredible. They gave two hundred and fifty dollars grants all week long to Fair. people, and they handed out the application. Yeah. We don't want to give that up because that you know power bill. Yes, yes, gas to get to work. You got to remember people that they're still trying to go to work. They can't say their spouses can't say, "Hey, I'm not going to do my duty. I'm not going to go to work." They are still continuing to go to work. How do you pay for your gas? Exactly. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's a reality that's setting in for a lot of people. So, 
you know, I'm just, I'm so grateful that we do have the support of our senior leaders here that not only said we have your back, but they keep us included in what's going on. They keep us in, they ask us for our ideas too. And, you know, it was funny because we pass, you know, those, those gifts back and forth. And we're like, we're like the shake and bake buddies now. Like you can't do one without the other at this point. Yeah. So it's been good to kind of, you know, break down those walls between spouses and enlisted people and kind of mesh together and create the connections that we have created. Right, exactly. And, and I will definitely send you those links. Not a funny situation, but what do you do? Yeah, you have to bring exactly. some humor into it or exactly. you're just going to sit on the couch and wallow up. There's no, there, that's not a military spouse's lie. That's not nope. the way we operate or work. No, nope, um, not at all. Pick it up and we go out and make magic happen. Exactly. That's what you're done. So be the light, continue yes. shining bright. Thank, thank you. you for coming on with me so early in the morning. I'm so glad. <laughs> no, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And give everybody loves and tell them thank you for standing and you know up there and helping out and those long lines and long days and long hours. Okay. I will. If you can do anything, just keep reaching out to me, okay? Will do. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you all for joining. Again, I'm Holly Vega with Military Home Base. Bye.